I'm Sebastian St. James. You are going to have to sell your shares and I'm here to tell you exactly why. You have been told to buy and hold shares, find good companies, buy them and then hold them for life. But that system is flawed. And if you follow that system, it may even send you poor. The buying part is good. Buying shares is one of the number one ways of building wealth. The holding part, well, that's also good. People who day trade, for example, who don't hold their shares, well, it may as well be playing the pokies. But the problem is the idea, the myth that you've been sold, that you can buy good companies and you can hold them indefinitely. The problem is the companies that people buy, the favorite companies, the obvious companies that you should put your money in for the rest of your life, have a nasty habit of failing. This is Toys R Us. They were an American toy, clothing and baby products company in the US that also was here in Australia. Their stores were a wonderland for kids and a market leader for sure. I remember them as clear as day. They were everywhere until they went bankrupt. Now, they have relaunched more recently in Australia. And then you can see Toys R Us Australia. Oh, the toy store is back, right. And if we have a look at their share graph, oh, look, it's up, 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 up. Okay, this is the Australian and New Zealand version of it, not the US. They sell toys to children. Children are not going anywhere and children, regrettably, still need toys. So it's an obvious winner. You buy Toys R Us, it's going to last you forever. Well, let's have a look at the graph. Up, oh, <coughs> it's crashed. It was a wonderful company and then, yeah, it basically became a basket case. No, had you put your money in that share for life, you'd have very, very little of it left. So even things that look like an obvious buy once and hold for life don't always turn out to be that way. This is Compaq, very popular. In the 80s and 90s, they were one of the largest producers of PCs across the entire world. Computers were a growth industry. They were just coming into the market. Everybody had to have a brand new PC. So being a market leader, a product that absolutely everybody wants, obviously it's a buy and hold forever share, right? until it wasn't. It was acquired by Hewlett Packard in 2002. Now, obviously being such a well-known brand, Hewlett Packard went to sell compact computers for decades, right? No, they actually retired off the brand. It doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. So you can't always tell that something which is market dominant and a product that obviously everybody's buying up goes on to be a dud in the future. You can't always tell. This is General Motors. When I was growing up, you were either a Ford or a Holden house. It was like football teams. There was rivalry. We were a Ford house, strictly a Ford house. We had some other cars as well, but we certainly didn't have Holdens until after I left home. And then my parents bought basically nothing but Holdens for the rest of their life. Traitors. So you would have thought back then, obviously General Motors, such fierce loyalty and everybody needs a car. It has to be a buy and hold forever share, right? Uh, excuse me, counterpoint, General Motors is still around. They haven't failed. In 2009, General Motors essentially went bust. They formed, with the help of a government bailout, a brand new company called General Motors Company, the new GM. And then they brought the assets of the old GM, including the trademark name General Motors. Hmm. So that is how to fail and pretend you haven't. So while we can get behind the idea of buy and hold, the idea of buy and hold forever clearly has some major problems with it. Now, it depends which stage of your life you're in. If you're 78, it could be that the shares you own right now will last you for the rest of your life. The breakfast cereal that you have in the pantry could last you for the rest of your life. I mean, I'm just saying. But if you're in your 50s, your 40s, your 30s, the stocks that you have now that you think you'll be holding for the rest of your life, well, I've got some news for you, that probably aren't gonna be worth that much in 30 years time. But of course, it does depend on the company. So you need to be reassessing your stocks, say once a year, and say what is still relevant now? What technical advantages do they have? What moats do they have? Are they still growing? Now, 
I showed you a few examples of companies that have failed. But you might think, well, maybe they're just cherry picked. Maybe the shares in general actually do really, really well. Other than the occasional one which will fail, I can buy and hold shares for the next 30 years. No problem. Well, let's look at the data. These are the 10 largest companies in 2023. Oh, we've changed color. They are Apple, Saudi Aramco, which is a Saudi Arabian oil company, Microsoft, Alphabet or Google, Amazon, Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, Meta Platforms or Facebook, TSMC, which is a Taiwanese chip maker, and United Health, which is a health company in the US. So they are the top stocks right now. They are the largest companies where? Just in the US? No, this is across the entire world. So obviously you can just buy them and hold them for the rest of your life, right? Which ones would you be willing? to buy and potentially hold for the rest of your life. But as powerful as I am in local financial data circles, I'm still as yet unable to see into the future. But what I can do is to see into the past. These are the 10 largest companies in 2022. Okay, so that's last year. 2023, well, we're finding just a couple of months into it. So I'm not surprised very little has changed, but let's see. So the top stocks are all the same. NVIDIA, whoa, at number eight. Where did that come from? That's not even on the list today, but last year, yeah, it was number eight. And Meta Platforms, oh, it's dropped by two positions. Mm, okay, still in the top 10, but not doing well. And United Health gone. Let's have a look at the largest companies in 2021. Apple remains the same. Microsoft, ooh, jumps up one spot to number two. Saudi Aramco falls down one spot. Amazon jumps up one spot. Google falls down one spot. They're kind of just interchanging. Facebook, oh, up four. Oh, very good. Tencent, oh, brand new. Hmm, okay, interesting. That's a Chinese company. Tesla has fallen two spots. TSMC remains exactly the same. That's why it's in blue. Alibaba, brand new. That's also a Chinese stock. Berkshire Hathaway is gone. So there you go. In 2021, Berkshire Hathaway was not one of the top 10 companies in the whole world. However, will Warren Buffett live that down? Let's go back a year in 2020. Saudi Aramco jumped up two places. Oh, it was the number one largest company in the whole world. Apple fell down one, Microsoft fell down one. Mm -hmm. Amazon, Google, Facebook all remained exactly the same. Alibaba jumped up three. Tencent jumped down one. Mm -hmm. Berkshire Hathaway, oh, it's new. It's come back onto the market at number nine. Visa, brand new. We haven't discussed Visa at all. And here it is at position number 10. Out go Tesla. That's right, in 2020, it actually wasn't in the top 10. And TSMC's gone. Wow, don't they know about the upcoming shortage in chips? Well, it's 2020. Depends exactly when in 2020 this list was taken. That's only two years ago. And things look a little bit different, but let's now speed it up. Let's jump all the way back to 2015. Wow, big changes here. Apple's jumped up one spot, it's now number one. Google's jumped up three spots, this is now number two. Microsoft, no, it remains at number three. Brand new into our list is ExxonMobil. I remember ExxonMobil was at top for years. Berkshire Hathaway, oh, it's jumped up four places. Brand new are Johnson & Johnson, as in drug makers, General Electric, Wells Fargo, and PetroChina. Okay, so one Chinese company, where's the rest gone? Facebook has lost four positions. Hmm. And out the door goes Saudi Aramco, Amazon. Amazon's gone. Hmm. Alibaba and Tencent, both Chinese companies. And Visa's gone. Oh, you only stay for one year. It's nice seeing you. That was in 2015, like seven and a half years ago. And yet no Amazon in the top. Hmm. Who would have thought? Let's jump back five years to 2010. ExxonMobil has jumped up three positions. Now number one in the whole world, PetroChina. Jumped up seven, wow. Okay, so it's all about fossil fuels. Microsoft, no, remains at position number three. ICBC is brand new. Mm -hmm. Apple's lost four, ooh, interesting. BHP's are brand new. Oh, an Australian company, number six in the entire world. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oh, how exciting. Of course, that's history. It's not now, but still, how exciting. At number seven, Petrobras, as in Brazil. Next is China Construction Bank, mm -hmm. Walmart, oh, brand new to the list, and China Mobile is brand new as well. Mm. At the door goes, oh no, it's Google, doesn't exist anymore. Berkshire goes, Facebook out, Johnson & Johnson out, General Electric out, Wells Fargo out. Now in fairness, some of these are tech companies that perhaps weren't around then. So they may have only been gone out because they were newly created. I mean, you can look up the dates and find that out for sure. But this is what happens, new technologies come 
they displace old technologies and therefore there's a bit of a cycle. So brand new things can disrupt old established things as we're seeing. Going back five years, ExxonMobil still number one. Yeah, they were there forever. General Electric, oh, just jumped in at number two, brand new. Microsoft, number three, it's, it's always number three. It just sits there. Citigroup, brand new. An American bank, BP, mm, British Petroleum, brand new. Royal Dutch Shell, brand new. Wow, it's all about petrochemicals. Walmart has jumped up to spaces. Mm, very well. Bank of America, it, oh, it's brand new at number eight. Johnson & Johnson's brand new. Toyota, wow, brand new. Mm, interesting. And out the door went ICBC, Apple. Mm, okay, there you go, people. 2005, Apple was a no-show. BHP's gone, Petrobras is gone, China Construction Bank is gone, China Mobile has gone. Wow. It's the year 2000. The Y2K bug is fully in force. And what are the largest companies in the whole world? Well, let's take a look. Number one. Oh, it's jumped up one spot. General Electric. Well done. ExxonMobil's dropped down one. So they've interchanged positions. Microsoft still at number three. Is it just going to sit at number three for the rest of the lists? Yes, maybe. Pfizer, brand new. Aha. We know Pfizer today, of course, with the COVID vaccine. But did you know that way back then, Pfizer was actually one of the top companies in the top 10? I bet you had no idea about that. At number five, jumping up two spots is Walmart Citigroup. No, it's fallen by two, brand new. Cisco, as in routers. Intel, as in computer chips, is brand new. Royal Dutch Shell, oh no, it's lost three positions. BP, it's lost five. Wow, that's a fall from grace, isn't it? And out go Bank of America, Johnson Johnson and Toyota. They're not even on the list. Let's pause here for a moment. That was the year 2000. That is 23 years ago. Now, when you retire, you're probably going to retire for 23 years or perhaps more, maybe up to 30 years. So let's look now what a 23 year retirement would be like if you bought and hold those shares right then in the year 2000 and what it would look like 23 years later. So these are the companies from the year 2000. I've blued them out. Are they still the largest in 2023? Let's have a look which ones are. And the answer is none of them. Oh, except Microsoft, which is still at position number three. That's incredible. <laughs> yes, 23 years ago, Microsoft was the third largest company in the whole world. And today, Microsoft is the third largest company in the whole world. When you look at the large companies today, Tesla, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, surely they have such huge market power that they're going to exist for the next 20, 30 years. They must be a buy and hold forever. But if you go back 23 years, all the big companies there really are a no show on the top list today. There's too many market disrupting technologies. To say that Google will be the big search engine forever, it may not be. It may be disrupted by ChatGPT or some future incarnation. You just do not know. Except, of course, for Microsoft, which will always be the third largest company in the world. Oh, this is the Not Happy Jan, which is Yellow Pages ad from a few decades ago. Back then, Yellow Pages were huge. They used to get delivered to your doorstep and everybody used them to basically look up absolutely everything. But when was the last time you used the Yellow Pages? Are they still around? Yes, they are. They're online version only, but they do still exist. But you probably aren't using them. Oh, and there is Jan running down the stairs. Where is she going to? Can't Jan just go online and place the ad that she forgot to put on? No, back then the internet wasn't really a thing. My, our times have changed. When they do retirement projections like the 4% rule portfolio, that's all based on 30 years. So now let's go back 30 years and find what the stocks were back then. And here they are. Oh, General Electric is still number one. ExxonMobil still number two. They haven't changed. Oh, AT&T, as in the telco, was brand new and number three. Altria is number four. Who's Altria? Well, that's what Philip Morris wants to call itself when it's trying to redo over its image. Walmart remains number five. Coca-Cola, what's well, still around today? But did you know it was so huge? And today, obviously it's not. Merck, as in drug manufacturer, was at number seven. Royal Dutch Shells jumped up one position. 
NTT, which is the Japanese telecom, is brand new, and IBM. Wow, here you go, got a mention at number 10. Yeah, not so much today. Out the door goes BP, British Petroleum, Citigroup, Cisco, Intel, Microsoft, and Pfizer. They all were not big in 1993. So there you have it. The shares that were big 30 years ago, none of them, not a single one, is actually in the top 10 today. But there could be number 11 or number 12. Maybe they're still really, really big and they're just sort of hiding underneath that number 10 position and therefore they're not showing. Well, let's find out exactly where they are today. Here it is, the big reveal. General Electric, oh, number 154. Oh, no, two thumbs down. That's right, that's why I've coloured it red. ExxonMobil, number 13. Well, it's not in the top 10, but it is, say, in the top 20. I'll give that a green. I would say that would have been a good investment over the last 30 years. AT&T, oh, number 92. No, that's a red investment. Not a very good investment at all. Altria, no, red also at 169. Walmart, 19. Yep, in the top 20 still, so I'll give that a thumbs up. Coca-Cola number 33, well, not particularly good, but not particularly bad. We'll colour it in blue, that's sort of mm, middle of the road. Merck, 163, wow, that is bad. That's got to be coloured red. Royal Dutch Shell, number 65, yep, that's coloured red as well. NTT, 137, wow, that's definitely red. And IBM, coloured red at 109. So 30 years ago, there was a top 10. How many of the top 10 today? Well, the answer is none. How many of them have actually been a good investment over that 30 years? Two, and maybe half a one, if you really wanted to hold on to Coca-Cola. So if your plan is to approach retirement and buy an amazing portfolio of stocks, what you're gonna find is halfway through your retirement, those amazing buy and hold forever shares probably aren't gonna be doing so well, and therefore some, you might want to get rid of. And let's say if your partner, your wife outlives you at the period of 30 years, the shares that you bought at the very beginning of your retirement, based on the statistics of the small sample that we looked at today, only 20% of them will still be worth holding on to. So buy and hold, yes. Buy and hold forever, mm -mm. probably not so much. Not only the shares from 30 years ago are much worse off today, pensioners are much worse off today. Click here to find out why, or if you've seen that, click here.